It's time for Hudson University Basketball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Performance PT, designing a healthier you. Greenway Equipment Sales at Ellsworth and Bangor. Nothing runs like a deer. Governor's Restaurant. Life is short. Eat dessert first. And Casella, giving resources new life. And now, from the Newman Gymnasium, it's Hudson Eagles Basketball. Hello and welcome back to everybody previously tuned into the broadcast. I'm Reese Dannenberg alongside Avery Henningsen, and we're getting set to bring you the second half of our doubleheader here at the Newman Gymnasium as it is time for the Huston University men's team to take on the Northern Vermont University at Linden Hornets men's team. Huston won last night's matchup between the two, 80 to 71, behind some strong play from Justice Kendall, Jeremy Maranta, and Scott Lewis, 17, 16, and 15 points for them. Uh, Avery, what do you want to see right off the bat Huston take advantage of in this one to get off to an early lead? I think they need to take advantage of those perimeter shots. This is a big Linden team. There's a lot of tall guys out there for them. And the Eagles are going to have to hit those, those deep shots that we saw get them into a pretty good mood. We saw, I remember it was the Thomas game, that there was a couple big threes in a row, and all of a sudden that whole Eagles crowd, the Eagles bench started getting going, and it felt like a different team. It felt like this is kind of prime Eagles play. For Linden, they're going to want to win inside in this one. They have a little bit of a height advantage. They have some really good scorers out there. And they have a history of kind of having Husson's number sometimes. That last season, or last season we saw them have a really big game against the Eagles where it didn't feel like they could miss a shot. And this season and in this game, they're going to have to do that again to beat this strong Eagles team. We will send it down courtside for these starting lineups now. And then welcome to Newman Gymnasium on the campus of Hudson University for this afternoon's North Atlantic Conference matchup featuring the Hornets of Northern Vermont University of Lincoln and your Hudson University Eagles. At this time, let's meet the starting lineups for today's game. First for the visiting Hornets, a freshman for the Goldsville, New York, 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 New And now, let's meet the starting lineup for your Hawkins University Eagles. At guard, this senior from Princeton Bank, number zero, Derek Collins. At guard, this senior from Bangor Bank, number 20, Luke Caruso. At center, of sophomore from Orange Park, Florida, number 31, Corey Humble. At four, this junior from South Oakland, Bank, number 34, Zach Luke. And that guard, our friend, who's through from Baltimore, Maryland, number 41, Justin Endo. And they go to come up to the 49th season in Ward Caruso. Season's to my young Clark, Chris Bryan, Will Taylor, and Justin Thompson. We are just about ready to get going here. We will run through the starting lineups real quick one more time. First for, first for the visiting, Hor excuse me, first for the visiting Hornets. It'll be number zero, Gregory Garnier Jr. Number four, Jaden McNeil. Number 10, Justin Phillips. Number 15, Peyton Olsen. And number 23, Monduel Buckle. And for the Eagles, it will be number zero, Derek Collin. Number 20, Luke Caruso. 31, Corey Humbles. And number 34, Scott Lewis, along with Justice Kendall in the backcourt. 
Eagles come into this one 11 and 12 overall, 9 and 3, however, in conference play. As Linden comes away with the tip. Right off the bat, a great pass from Buckle down low to McNeil, who has a tough finish. That's how this one gets started, 2 to 0, Linden. Yeah, and that's exactly how Linden wanted to start this game. Get out to that quick early lead, force the Eagles to play from behind, and let them make the mistakes rather than Linden. Here's Colin now on the right side block. He takes it right at Phillips, and he gets rejected from behind by McNeil. Stays with it and is able to put it in, plus the foul. He will go to the free throw line for one more. Yeah, a great tough basket there from Colin to kind of answer that quick early one from Linden and get the Eagles, have that momentum, get back to even. Great job by Colin to stay with it on that one after getting rejected out of the first shot as the free throw for him drops. Three to two, Austin with the advantage now. We see a full court trap. Gagne down low to McNeil, to Phillips right back to Gagne. Can't finish, Phillips down low, he can't finish either. Holland comes away with the board. Here comes Kendall pushing in transition. Gets into the lane, goes up at the left and cannot finish. Olsen with it now. Buckle, floater from about 17 feet, there's no good. Here comes Caruso now, up court to Humbles. Kendall, top of the key, resetting the offense. Collin inside, back out to Caruso. The corner three is no good. Rebound comes down to Buckle. Over to Olsen, left side for three. That one rims in and out. Almost comes down with a strong rebound. Colin, top of the key now with it. Looking for Lewis and gets it to him. Caruso has it now, left side. Humbles dishes to Kendall, who gets called for the offensive foul underneath the hoop. Lowered his shoulder there. He will pick up his first foul. Yeah, good job by the Hornets there to kind of draw that foul and force Kendall inside on that one. And that's something the Eagles don't want. They don't want some of their best players getting into foul trouble already early on in this one. This is going to be a game that goes all the way into the fourth quarter. It's not going to be a team in the lead in the first and just kind of hold on to it. You're going to have teams. This is going to be a game right up until the end. As Olsen is no good on the mid-range jumper. Here's Colin now with a jumper of his own. No good. They're going to say out of bounds. Off of Colin, it looks like. The Hornets will take over possession. Garnier with it now. Just coming off. Turns it over there. As Buckle was unable to handle the pass. Garnier coming off. Second straight. Knack Rookie of the Week award. Been a very impressive freshman. Over the past week, last week against MMA, he put up 31 points, five rebounds, and three assists. Definitely deserving of that Rookie of the Week award. Lewis kicks out to Humbles for three. That one's no good. Rebound fought for and taken down by Linden. Here they come the other way. Phillips with it. Buckle catches right side. They're going to say he shuffled his feet before putting the ball down. Yeah, like what you were saying there with Gagne just a second ago, that he scored 31 last week. He scored 24 last night against the same Eagles team. And he's shooting very effectively, 55% from the floor and over 30 from three-point range at 40%, actually, which you can do that at the D3 level. That's how you can score a lot of points. And for him to be doing that as a freshman is big. That Those are the types of players that you see him fall out their freshman season, and a lot of times they can carry that through over a four-year college career. We see a foul down low on McNeil trying to defend Lewis in the post. 
Here's Caruso with it on the right side. And they're gonna call another offensive foul. This one's gonna go on Luke Caruso. They'll say he extended that left, or excuse me, yeah, extended that left arm. Second team foul, both of them of them offensive fouls committed by the person with the ball. As Humbles has it, or excuse me, Humbles pokes it away from Buckle. Tipped around and it will stay with the Hornets. Ganyea, kick out to Olsen. Finds Phillips driving in, is able to lay it in. Dangerous pass there, it was almost taken away by Buckle. Here comes Kendall, the full head of steam the other way, can't lay it in, humbles with the rebound, he can't lay it in. They're gonna say it was tipped out of bounds off of a Linden player. Husson will retain possession. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Kendall to inbound. Gets it into Caruso, who puts up a three and is able to knock it down. Luke Caruso on the board with his first three of the game with that shot. Good defense from Kendall is able to knock that one away. But McNeil able to knock down the open jumper, 7-6. Linden leading Huston in this one early. early. Yeah, and McNeil's another freshman starter out there for Linden who's had a really good season defensively and offensively that this team is already looking set up to have a good team in the future. Caruso with the floater, can't get that one to go. Beautiful outlet pass from Buckle to Gonyea. Able to lay it in. And you see it, saw a lot of speed out there for Gagne on that one that he just kind of streaked all the way up that far sideline from us. And just the Eagles had no chance at getting anywhere close to him. That one poked away by Olsen. Good hands there to come up with that catch and lay it in. Pass was a little bit behind him. Gagne able to catch it. Seize control and put it up and in. Yeah, and that was another one right there that they got the turnover and the Eagles are going to have to cover that ball for Gagne coming down that far sideline that I've seen him a couple times already streak up that far side. Here's a pass that gets turned over. Phillips with the steal. Here comes Buckle running the other way. He'll shoot a catch and shoot three. That one's no good. Gets it right back. He'll put up another one and that one is knocked down. That forces Coach Caruso to take a timeout, 14 to six. Our score in this one, don't go anywhere, you're watching Huston Eagle Sports Network. Five years ago, we started this journey of recycling. And with that same ingenuity, with that same innovation, and with that same entrepreneurship, we're approaching our next 45 years. We have an obligation to figure out how we can consume less, how we can recycle more, how we can create more sustainable products, and how we help our customers enable that. We owe it to the future generations to continue to do better and recycle better. back 14 to 6 our score early on in this one Linden coming out really hot shooting almost 55 percent overall Huston right around the 20 percent mark to start off yeah the Hornets are on a 10-0 run over that last minute 40 before that timeout and the Eagles they just brought in Maranta who's one of their best scorers and I think they're going to want to try to change that here in this like middle part of the first half Lewis with it on the post. He makes a move, can't finish, offensive board. Lewis goes up again, and he gets fouled this time. That one will be on Gagne. That'll be his first foul, as Lewis will go to the free throw line for two.
First one for Lewis is no good. He comes into this one around 62% from the line as we see Jay Thomas check into the game for the Eagles. Second free throw from Lewis rolls around and rolls in. Here comes Linden the other way now. Cadden with it. Is it knocked away? Now into the hands of Olsen. Gagne, tough take. And he touched it while he was standing on the baseline. They're going to say out of bounds off Linden. Yeah, and Thomas comes into this one for Kendall, who I know hasn't been exactly 100%. I know I'm pretty sure it was a hamstring issue in the last couple of weeks, but he's been playing really well since he came back from that. But I think he's definitely on a little bit of a minute watch in this game that there's going to be times that Caruso takes him out in these kind of dead moments in the game so that he can be prepared for those later moments in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's definitely on a minutes restriction as we saw yesterday. He also hurt what it looked like as Caruso with a beautiful move to the bucket. Kendall, end of the game yesterday, took a shot and it looked like he might have re-hurt his hamstring, but great to see him back out there playing again today. McCadden now with it, over to Buckle on the right side, being guarded by Caruso. Caruso knocks that one away and comes up with the steal. Maranta with it. A couple swings, ball finds Ehlers in the corner, just checked in. Can't knock it down. Offensive rebound comes to Lewis. Caruso in the corner. Back to Lewis up top. He'll put up a three. Not able to knock it down. Here comes Gagne the other way with a burst of speed. Bounce pass to Buckle. He lays it in. Thomas looks to feed Lewis. Not anticipating a pass. Here comes Linden the other way. Garnier along the baseline. Tough take to the basket. Avery, he attacks very, very strong going to the hole. Yeah, he's not the biggest guy out there. He's only six foot listed on here, but he has a lot of speed and he uses his momentum well that he gets going and then kind of throws his body up there and not with a lot of fear and just he can kind of knock people around using that momentum that doesn't take the biggest guy to knock over the biggest guy, obviously, that you can get, you use your body weight well, you can knock over anybody. As you mentioned, fearless going to the bucket, right through contact, he just powers through. Here he is at the line, knocks down both free throws. 71% for him on the year. Moranta with it. He finds Woods just checked into the game. Here's Woods in the middle of the lane. Comes up short. Rebound goes to Balzer. Also just checked back into the game. And he lays it in. Carlisle with it now. Back to Gagne with an incredible finish. Over the 6-9, Jared Balzer. Tough shot there. Momentum carrying him out of bounds even. Moranta has it. That gets poked away by Harris. Yeah, and Ganya does that so well that he kind of gets these plays where he gets going, and he's so good at making those kind of layup shots while in the air. Ehlers with it, finds Moranta on the post. Moranta spins, and he lays it in, a tough finish. Here's Harris with it now, coming down the lane. He gets fouled by Woods. On the way up, let's see if they call it a shooting foul. They will. Tyrese Harris will go to the line for two shots. Yeah, and Harris only shooting 41% from free throw line this season, and he hasn't ha exactly had a whole lot of luck from that spot. Yeah, only 16 of 39 coming into this one. So definitely been struggling as he misses two there. Thomas comes away with the rebound, 20 to 13. Just about nine minutes have passed in this first half. Maranta has it. 
He kicks to Woods in the corner for three. That one's no good. Rebound tipped out. Walzer, they're going to say Eric Ehlers had a push off the ball. They're going to give him a foul. That'll be his second. And a lot of offensive fouls already in this early going for the Eagles that they haven't exactly had a whole lot that I think it's three and two right now, and it's an interesting one that you often see a lot more defensive fouls than offensive fouls out there. Olsen with it, strong take, can't get it to go. Balzer comes away with the rebound. Up ahead, Maranta with it, gives a couple in and out dribbles. Goes up, can't finish. Ehlers with a strong rebound and puts it back in. Tough play there from Eric Ehlers to stay with it, finish that one. Cadden with it, gets it poked away. Now Carlisle. Harris down low with a great finish. Is able to fight off DJ Woods and create some space to finish that one. Here is Woods up top now, calling the offense. Balzer finds Ehlers down low. Ehlers will put up a mid-range jumper and knock it down in the face of Olsen. Yeah, and he used his size on that one. Ehlers is six foot five and was able to just kind of shoot right over the top of him and not allow him to really guard that at all. Balzer gets a hand on that one. McCadden with it now, top of the key. Finds Olsen, drives in against Jay Thomas. And Thomas picks up a foul. Thomas had some bad foul luck yesterday. Picked up four quick fouls. Maybe some questionable calls, but can't really argue it. Part of the game. Yeah, and Thomas normally is such a good competitor out there. He's a wicked nice guy in person, and he's not someone that he makes those intentional hard fouls. He's not someone who gets distracted easily and kind of makes a foul that you wouldn't normally see someone make out there out of anger or whatever, but sometimes the luck of the draw just doesn't go your way on some plays. That There's a foul for one referee that's not a foul for a different referee, and sometimes it just doesn't go your way, but Thomas is one of those guys that kind of pick his head up and just move right on past that. Definitely. Definitely, as you mentioned, one to move right on. Never really gets, seems to get too riled at a bad call if he feels a call is a bad call. Just kind of continues on with it. As there's a foul underneath the hoop. That'll go on Harris. Jay Thomas, though, like we said, just really wanted to maybe shake his head a couple times at a bad call, but really just on to the next play for him. Here he is in the corner, back down low to Maranta. Maranta working on the post. He'll put up a mid-range jumper that rolls out. Gagne with a rebound. That is Roy with a pass that almost gets stolen. Into the hands of Harris now. Deep shot, that is Carlisle. Cannot knock it down. Yeah, Carlisle last season against the Eagles had his career high in points with 36 and pretty sure he went six of nine from the three point line. And he's someone that the, this Eagles team probably has some not so fond memories of after that game last year where he kind of had a career once in a lifetime type game where he just couldn't miss. Harris with it in the corner now. He gets picked up by Balzer who knocks it off the leg of Harris. Good play from Balzer. It'll be Hudson basketball. Twenty-four to seventeen. Eight and a half minutes to play in this first half here. Woods with it. Ehlers, free throw line jumper, comes up short. Gagne leaking out. Good hands from Woods there, able to come up with a steal. In transition, he can't finish the layup. Maranta right there with the rebound, is able to put it in. K 
kick out. There's Carlisle with a three. Like you mentioned, six of them last year here, or excuse me, last year against Huston. Definitely a lethal shooter if he can get hot. There's a great play. Looks like, uh, yeah, Harris might have tipped that one away. And that is a traveling violation called. Coming in for the game on the Huston side will be Derek Collin and Justice Kendall checking back in. Yeah, and DJ Woods just did a great job slowing Gagne down. That in the start of that game, it just it felt like he couldn't be stopped. And I saw that Woods kind of came in on him, and I think his job was solely just cover this guy, make sure you stick to him, and not allow him to kind of get open. And he did a great job there to only limit him to two there for over eight minutes or so. And great job out there defensively for the Eagles. Well, Ronta with a tough finish on the other end. He's now up to six points. Buckle has it now, working on Moranto, the right side. Harris with it. They're gonna say Balzer poked that one out of bounds. As Phillips comes in for Harris, for Linden. Hornets will take the ball out underneath their own hoop, 11 seconds on the shot clock. That inbounds pass gets stolen from by Maranta, who goes up with the finger roll and is able to lay it in, plus the foul. Great job there from Maranta, reading that pass, getting the steal, and then able to convert through the foul on the other end. Yeah, great transition there from Maranta. That he's someone who's really stepped up when Kendall kind of went down there for a couple weeks. Maranta stepped up, had that career game a couple weeks ago against Thomas. And he's someone that, as a junior, is going to be a player that next season will see him step up into a much bigger role. And he's already stepping into it now that he doesn't usually start, but he plays starter minutes in every single game. As you mentioned, not a starter. Does, however, lead the team in points, rebounds, steals, and field goal percentage coming off the bench. So definitely an intricate part of this team. Very key piece for them going forward. Well, it's one of those ones that if Kendall, who obviously is a thousand point scorer for the Eagles and one of the better pro players in program history, if he wasn't on this team, Maranta would be starting every single game. And we saw in that one game that Kendall missed out on, Maranta scored 30. And it's one of those ones that he's just such a talented player that he plays so much, even though he doesn't start. And when the two of them are out there, it's so hard to cover. Trapani with it, over to Roy. Carlisle in the middle of the lane, puts up a jumper, he's able to knock it down. Tough mid-range shot, fading away. Right in the middle of the lane from Carlisle. Balzer with it at the three-point line. Hands it off to Maranta. Back to Balzer, who's gonna put up a three. No good. Rebound comes down to Terrell. Carlisle being guarded by Collin now. Trapani kicks to Buckle, almost has it taken away. Buckle through a crowd. That one does get taken away. Great outlet pass from Collin up to Justice Kendall who contorts his body and is able to finish. And then Kendall will pick up a call there on a reach-in foul. Got a little bit excited after that finish down there. Tried to get a steal. A little bit too aggressive. Yeah, and that puts Linden in the bonus now in this first half. And Kendall's up to two, but that's not exactly... He hasn't reached that line where it starts to get a little bit scary. First free throw from Terrell is good. Isaiah Terrell, the freshman from Vermont, only playing about three minutes per game so far this season. This is only his third and fourth free throw attempts on the year. 
He's now two for four. Not much playing time for him. We'll see if he can come in and make an impact here in this one. Maranta receives a screen from Balzer. Great no-look pass to feed him. Balzer brings it down, has it stripped away. Gets back on it, though. And they're going to say that he traveled. A little bit of chaos on that play. Yeah, there was two or three Hornets players that got knocked over by balls on that one. And obviously, he's a big boy out there, 6'8", but 6'8", 240 listed on the roster sheet. But he's someone that you don't really want running into you on some types of plays. Carlisle has it. Finds Gagne. Almost loses the handle. That is Balzer with a huge rejection on McNeil down low. That gets this Hussin student section. Probably the loudest we've heard them today. Yeah, and those are some brave souls down there who came into this one. The, the Bangor area right now, for those of you who aren't in the general main New England regions in that kind of negative degree range right now. Last night was negative 40, I think, when the men's game got out, but it's a cold day out there. You don't really want to be outside for that long, but shows the heart of this Husson crowd that they're coming in to support this team, even in winter tundra type conditions out there. Gagne with a kick to Carlisle, who, who hits a contested corner three. Tough shot there from Carlisle. Right over Corey Humbles, the outstretched arms of Corey Humbles, who has a long wingspan. Colin left side. Moranta with it now, up top. Moranta will take a step back three. Unable to knock that one down. Pass goes up ahead to Carlisle, just too much on that one. Olsen trying to get it to him. Here is Kendall with it now for the Eagles. 33 to 28, three and a half minutes to go in this first half. Been a pretty back and forth, heavily contested game. Neither team really able to find some breathing room as Maranta, Jeremy Maranta is having a great game from the low post mid range area. I believe all of his points have come from about six to 10 feet. Another great game from him to kind of step up and hit those difficult shots out there. Gagne puts up a three. No good. He's around 40% from three on the year. Unable to knock down that one. Colin gets in a bit of trouble. Here's Kendall who puts up a three. No good. And Maranta comes down with the rebound. And they're going to say he traveled as he fell on his way down. As Tyrese Harris comes into the game for the Hornets. Three point game. Linden finds themselves with the lead and the ball. Two and a half to play, first half. Olsen with it on the right side, being guarded by Colin. Tries to make a move. He does so, and he finishes through the contact. And one for Peyton Olsen. Junior guard from Middleburg, New York. Averaging almost 15 points per game. He also had a big weekend last weekend against Maine Maritime on Friday, putting up 31 points, seven rebounds, five assists, as well as six steals. Follow that up the next Saturday, the day after, with 25 points, six rebounds, and four assists. Yeah, he's a really talented player, and those are the types of games that can really get your stat sheet upped out there that you might average eight for the whole season, and then you drop 30 for back-to-back -back games, and all of a sudden you can flip that right on its head.
But right now, we've kind of seen this back and forth game race that you've had. Linden has had the lead, I think, for most of this game, but the Eagles have kind of clawed their way back. I know they were down 10 at one point, but they've brought this game back to a five point game. One or two big shots, all of a sudden, it's Eagles' lead. Yeah, both teams have only had the lead two times. Linden has been in control for most of the game, though. Humbles the catch and shoot three. No good on that one. Corey Humbles had three threes in yesterday's contest. Unable to knock down that one. Olsen kicks the buckle. Gagne, right side. McNeil, almost carried. Olsen has it, being guarded by Collins. Step back three, two seconds on the shot clock. Had to put it up, can't knock it down. Here's Buckle catch and shoot three. No good. Derek Collins comes away with his fourth rebound. And the Eagles right now are only one of 11 from beyond the arc, whereas the Hornets are four of 10 after that one. And that's something that the Eagles are gonna wanna change in this, that you can't be shooting 9% from the three point line. Buckle able to lay in the open fast break layup, seven point lead now for Linden. Great cut there from Colin and a great feed from Scott Lewis at the top of the key. Good to see some off ball player movement on offense turning into some easy buckets. Here's McNeil to catch and shoot three. That one's no good, rebound comes to Kendall. Up ahead pass to Lewis, lays it in. Four quick points, has the Eagles right back into this thing in a one possession game. Here's Harris underneath. They're gonna say he stepped out of bounds. So a great 30 second stretch for Husson. Has him right back in this in a one possession game with the ball again. Yeah, like you said, Reese, I was saying during that free throw there a few minutes ago that all the Eagles need to do is have a good few plays in a row, make some good defensive plays, have Linden miss a few shots, and then have the Eagles make those shots on the other end, and that's exactly what they just did. There is a three second difference between the shot clock and the game clock here, as the first half is coming to a close. Humbles tried to feed Moranta coming up on the handoff. And uh, Aaron pass. Sales out of bounds. Linden will take over with 19 seconds remaining. Buckle has it, now Gagne, right side. Olsen, three seconds on the clock. Drives in and Scott Lewis rejects it to end the first half. 37-34, Linden finds themselves in front in this one, about how it was yesterday in the first half, pretty closely contested game. Big difference right now, Linden shooting 48% overall, Husson down around 38%, and like you said, only 9% from three in that first half. Yeah, that's something that sometimes it's great defense and it's also the Eagles are not shooting that well they're, they're a little bit cold from out there right now, and they've taken a few shots that they don't need to, but they've also missed some that should be buckets pretty easily. As we will take a look at some first half numbers before we send it to the break, Jeremy Maranta leading the way for Huston with 11 points, three rebounds. Derek Collin added seven points and four rebounds. Caruso added five points. Eric Ehlers put in four, Lewis with three, Kendall and Balzer each with two. And on the Linden side, it is Gagne and Carlisle leading the way each with eight points. Buckle has seven of his own. 
McNeil has five. Olsen with four, also has three steals. Phillips with two, Harris with two, and Terrell added a free throw. We have second half action coming up at the other end of the break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Huston Eagle Sports Network.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just about set to start the second half here. As we see Linden ahead by three, 37 to 34. I'm Reese Dannenberg alongside Avery Henningsen. We'd like to take a moment to thank today's game sponsors. Performance PT, designing a healthier you. Greenway Equipment Sales in Ellsworth and Bangor. Nothing runs like a deer. Governor's Restaurant, life is short, eat dessert first. And Casella, giving resources new life. Avery, what would you like to see from the Eagles coming out of this second half to gain a little bit of momentum on their side and try to turn the tables here? I think they're going to need to improve on that three-point shooting in that first half. We talked about it right at the end. They only had a shot from 9% on 11 shots. So the Eagles definitely need to improve on that. I think Linden out-athleticized them in that first half. Ganya had some great plays underneath. They had some stuff that was working on him, though, that he had eight in that first half of the first half and then didn't score much else after that. And the Eagles are going to have to keep that up. He's one of the Hornets' best players, and they're going to have to make sure they can keep slowing him down. Here are the Eagles out of the half. Kendall with the left side gets a screen from Lewis, finds Caruso with the corner three, who isn't able to knock it down, but gets his own rebound, then has it stripped away. Buckle with it now on the other end, lays it in. Buckle now up to nine points on the game. Justice Kendall being guarded by Buckle. Now swings it over to Humbles. Kendall back up top, has Phillips on him now. Goes into the lane and cannot finish with the left hand. Gagne goes right at Scott Lewis and lays it in. Yeah, and that shows his athleticism there. Scott Lewis is a 6'8 center, and Gagne is a six-foot guard who just went right at him and laid it in right over top of him. And Gagne has a lot of hop, a lot of speed, and he's dangerous out there when he gets those little openings. Now he gets poked away by McNeil from Scott Lewis. And here is McNeil on the other end. Goes up and lays it in. And another hot start for the Hornets. We saw it in the first half. They got out to an early lead. They're up more than 10 there. Then the Eagles kind of clawed back in that second half of the first half there. And it's what the Eagles are going to have to do again in this half. Humbles, three-pointer rolls out for him. Kanye pushing in transition the other way with a full head of steam. He has a burst of speed that is unmatched out here on the court today. Yeah, it only takes him one or two steps to just get going at full speed, and it's really hard to guard because he doesn't need a whole lot of room to score baskets. All he needs is one or two steps to get up to that speed and then he gets in the air, and then at that point, it's really hard to stop him. Good move by Buckle there. Good footwork to get into the lane, lay it in. Now up to 11, ties Jeremy Maranta as the leading scorer for this game. Kendall drives in and finds Caruso, who steps on the sideline, out of bounds. That is the 13th Huston turnover in this one. A lot of them seem unforced. Gagne getting into the lane. Beautiful dish over to McNeil. Yeah, too many eyes were on Gagne there. He had the ball, but you can't always just focus on whoever has the ball in those types of situations. Not with someone who's as good of a passer as he is. Caruso, three-pointer, rolls out. Offensive rebound goes to Maranta. Lewis gets fouled on the floor on the sideline. Huston will retain possession underneath the hoop. Kendall to inbound. Finds Caruso. Maranta tries to feed it to a cutting. Justice Kendall has it poked away. Eric Collins is able to pick it up and put in a little mid-range jumper in the middle of the lane. 
Flacco keeping the dribble alive. And he's able to finish a tough finger roll over Lewis. Yeah, and Buckle's been averaging about 15 points per game this season. And you saw right there that he just kind of scooted that right inside and right over Lewis. And they have just called Jeremy Maranta for a flop. A technical foul has been called and assessed. Kanye goes to the free throw line, knocks down the free throw. Coach Caruso is furious on the sideline. Yeah, that's not a foul you see all that often, Reese. That, that's one that's one of the referee's discretion, but it's one that they don't usually make just because of how, how controversial it can be sometimes that it's did he flop or did he just trip over his own feet that it's not necessarily every time you fall over is an intentional kind of flop play. Lewis gets into the lane, loses footing, gets it back, now shoots a three. That one rolls out. Rebound comes down to McNeil. And they're gonna give a 20 second reset on the shot clock to Husson underneath the hoop. Laranta catches on the wing, left side. Makes a move on Phillips and finishes over with the foul. Laranta will get a chance at the line for one more in a three point play. Yeah, and a big play from him. We've seen that a lot, Reese, that he can make those tough inside plays against bigger guys a lot like Ganya that he can move around and then make those tough layups. I was just about to compliment the defense from Justin Phillips. And then Maranta with a beautiful spin move to get away, create some space and finish the layup. Unable to hit the free throw though. We see Harris with it, now Buckle. Olsen. Right side, puts up a three against Colin. He knocks it down. Olsen's first three of the game. He is one for three so far, up to seven points now. Maranta, middle of the lane, another spin move. This one dishes off to Lewis. Who tries to feed Maranta back down low. Unable to get that pass to him. Here's Buckle trying to dribble through, double team. He gets fouled. That foul will be on Maranta. His first foul. That one gets slapped out of bounds by Lewis. It will stay Linden basketball underneath the hoop. Yeah, and the Eagles need to get something going right now, Reese. They're now down 15, and you can't, as this clock starts ticking down, you don't want to be down more than you can physically score in an amount of time without barring some sort of crazy miracle. Maranta misses the lay-in, but sticks with it, finishes the putback. And Coach Warren Caruso wants a timeout to talk things over. He's currently down 13, 53 to 40. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Huston Eagles Sports Network. Choosing a school is really difficult, but I have never felt like I should have gone somewhere else. The thing about I like about the school, the class sizes are smaller. Making friends is easier here because of the fact that you are such a tight-knit community. I was shooting around a basketball, that's how I met my first friend. You meet a lot of new people from different areas of the world. I feel like I've grown so much here. And there's so many amazing people that work here to learn from. I definitely made the right decision coming to Hassan. We are back out of the timeout as right away Gagne gets called for the travel. A little bit too quick 
for his own good there as his feet were moving before he was able to put the ball down. Yeah, and those are the types of plays that for the Eagles you want to get. Those ones where you can get a quick turnover and then score baskets at the other end. I was talking about how you can't afford to go down more than you can physically score. And if you can keep it in that 10-point range or so heading into the final 10 minutes, that's very manageable, but you can't get down by more than 10 or 15. Here's Thomas with it now. Finds Lewis, who finds Colin underneath, unable to finish. McNeil with the rebound. Here comes Harris the other way for the Hornets. Beautiful pass from Olsen to McNeil down low. Great vision from Olsen, was able to feed McNeil on the cut, who found himself wide open. Here Lewis draws a foul on McNeil. As we see Carlisle gets set to check back in for, or excuse me, that is McCadden. Calder McCadden checking in for the Hornets as well as Schuitza and Balzer checking into the game for the Eagles. Schuitza getting his first minutes in this one after starting for a good portion of January, Avery. Yeah, and the Eagles right now have some physicality out there at Reese that Balzer and Schuitza are both very known for liking contact underneath and going for those kind of tough plays where you wind up into a big collision with another guy and both of them can take it and it can sometimes really get the Hudson crowd going. That's Jared Balzer right away, checking into the game, hitting a nice jump shot. Get him going. McCadden now dishes to Olsen, buckle in the corner for three. That one rims out, Olsen the offensive board. Buckle unable to put the first one in, here's his second Second opportunity chance, and he knocks that one down. Kendall goes in, he picks up a foul on Buckle. That'll be his first foul on this one. He's done a great job playing intense defense, getting a bunch of steals, poking balls away without fouling. Yeah, he's impressed me a lot in this one, Reese. A lot of athleticism out there. He's had some really great finishes on the offensive side for Linden. And like you said, really great defense without having a lot of fouls. As right on cue, he does pick one up there. That'll be Justice Kendall drawing that foul. He is going to go to the free throw line. For what will be his first free throw attempts in this one. Husson, as a team, only shot five attempts so far in this game. Kendall's first free throw is up, and it is good. Justice Kendall coming in 70% from the line. Missed the last four games for the one yesterday. This is his first weekend of action back. Here's Harris with it now. Over to Gagne, fakes the three. Drives in, now the kick out to Olsen for three. Leaves it short, but Harris with a great play. McCadden has it rejected by Schuitza. Up ahead, Maranta, the easy lay-in. Yeah, McCadden tried to go up for that shot and just a wall with Balzer and Schuitza out there. We talked about that physicality, and they are not two guys you can go at inside and try to hit those short little shots. Hey, Thomas with a strong rebound off the miss from Buckle. Kendall nearly turns it over, picked up by Schuitza, and a beautiful no-look pass down low to Maranta, who finishes the layup. Huston back within single digits. There's a blocking foul by Schuitza. Huston back within nine. About 13 minutes left in this game. We see Carlisle check back into the game for the Hornets, as well as DJ Woods checking in for the Eagles. Gagne, now over to Carlisle. Here's Harris outside. 
He'll drive in. And they'll say he shuffled his feet right before the pass, calling for a travel. That is the 13th Linden turnover in this one. Hustle with 14 of their own. And a defensive battle, a little bit of a sloppy game from both teams taking care of the ball. Very fast paced game. Here's Thomas going baseline. Tries to find Woods, but a little bit of miscommunication on that one. Harris with it. Olsen now, left side. Picks up his dribble, is met with a double team. Here's Carlisle, middle of the lane. And Shuiza just literally took that one away from Carlisle. And he gets hit on that layup. We'll go to the free throw line for two. Avery, what a defensive play. Carlisle went up for the jump shot. Shuiza took it right out of his hands. I don't know how else to describe that. Yeah, that was that physicality we talked about. Schwitz is a big boy, and he just kind of grabbed that and ripped it right out. And a nice job by him to take that to the other end. I think he would have wanted that layup for the and one, but he makes the first free throw and is right back on track there. Schwitz from Serbia, graduated from George Stevens Academy. Currently at 50% offline at the year. He makes both of those free throws. This is back to a seven point game. Gagne gets tripped up. That foul will go on Jay Thomas. Gagne today and yesterday as well, really taking a beating this past weekend. Well, we talked about it earlier that he really goes into a lot of plays with a lot of momentum and a lot of fearlessness. And sometimes that is a really big role out on the floor, but other times it can lead to these kind of plays where he comes flying into someone and then they come flying right back. And it can lead to him getting kind of beat up out there, like you said. Yeah, yesterday as well, took a shot. Jared Balls are on a loose ball. Had him down on the floor for a few minutes at least. So he is really taking a beating, as I said. There's Maranta who picks up a foul on a little bit of a chaotic inbound. Carlisle, the inbound now down in the corner. Gets it to buckle. Pani kicks to Roy over to Carlisle. Buckle catches, puts down a dribble. Now will shoot for three. Knock it down. Buckle up to 18 points now. Four rebounds, three assists as well. Woods catch and shoot three from the corner. That one is no good. Buckle tried to give a pass to Trapani. And a turnover. Hudson's able to capitalize off of it. Here's Carlisle. Over to Roy. Now Harris goes right into that wall of Schuitza and Balzer that you talked about. And he gets called for a travel. Like you mentioned, it's gonna be pretty hard to get through Shuitsa and Balzer when they stay put underneath the hoop, keep their ground. Yeah, Shuitsa's 6'5", 215, Balzer's 6'9", 240, and they're both guys who just kind of a brick wall out there. Woods with a great take to the bucket. No call. Down the other way is Buckle with the lay-in. He is now up to 20 points. 
Ronta has it now, left side, working on Carlisle. He drives in, has it poked away by Carlisle, and it will stay Huston basketball. Yeah, and I think Maranta likes that matchup. I've seen him a couple times now try to go in and kind of bully Carlisle a little bit underneath the basket. That foul will go on Brett Roy for Linden, and Shuitsa will go back to the free throw line for two more shots. I'll also put uh, Hassan into the bonus now so that they can take those three sh free throw shots on those on the floor fouls. The first end of a one and one is good from Shuitsa. That makes it a nine point game. Second shot is good. Single digits now, 62 to 54. 10 minutes to play. Harris with it, drives in, and Schweitzer with an emphatic rejection. Yeah, and we'll watch this one back, Reese. That, that right there. An incredible block from Schweitzer. What an athletic play. As we take a look. At the replay, there's a turnover from Linden. Another travel as we see Shoitsa with an emphatic rejection. What a block. What athleticism to get that one and swat it all the way pretty much to the front row. Yeah, and that's that defense we talked about and that power from Shoitsa that he kind of came in and just knocked that one out. Here's Woods with it pushing. He'll stop, pop. Cannot hit. Shuitsa with a great tip out. Woods has it right side. And they're going to call Tyrese Harris with a hold down low on Jeremy Maranta on the block. That'll send Maranta to the free throw line for a one and one. Maranta currently one of two at the line today. We see four new subs for the Hornets as Gagne, McNeil, Olsen, and Phillips all check back into the game. Normal starters for Linden. Yeah, and Gagne was over there in that corner kind of stretching out that calf it looked like. It looks like he's still doing it a little bit, but that's going to be one to watch to see if he's going to be fully healthy out there. But a great job by the Eagles during his absence and some of these other guys being over on the bench to kind of bring this game back close again that they're now down eight after that one or six after that one. And I talked about that you don't want to be down more than 10 with 10 minutes left to play. They've gotten it back down to single digits and that's right where they want to be. Two big threes, it's a tie ball game. Yeah, Huston's gotten themselves right back into this one. Like you said, exactly where they want to be in this situation compared to what it was. Buckle working on Shuitsa. He'll step back and shoot a three in the face of Shuitsa and knock it down. Yeah, I'm not sure what else Shuitsa could have done on that one except block it, but great defense from him, but an even better basket there from Buckle. Yeah, great def or great offense beat beats great defense every time. Shuitsa going right back against Buckle. On the other end, and Buckle gets called for the foul. Avery, we were just talking about how he plays great defense without fouling, and since then he's picked up three quick fouls. Yeah, we kind of gave him that commentator's curse a little bit. We've seen it. I know I've seen it with football that you talk about the guy's only missed one extra point all season, and then he goes 0 for 5 for the rest of the game. But the Eagles right now are in this kind of weird limbo moment in the game where they need to play hot for this last eight and a half minutes or they're out of it kind of thing. First one from Schuitza is good. But you can't afford to make that many more mistakes in this game and hope to stay in contention to win it. Second one from Schuitza, a little bit short, rolls out. It will remain an eight point game, 65 to 57. Eight and a half minutes to play here. 
Buckle goes in. Good defense there from Schwitzer to contest that one. Thomas for three. No good, Maranta offensive board and is able to put it in. Through the bigger Phillips. It looked like Phillips might have had a foot on the line as he inbounded there. Refs didn't see it. He is fouled here. Only the sixth foul for Husson, so still not yet shooting. Olsen, right side, left wide open, and it rolls out. How unfortunate of a roll that was, Avery. That rolled around the rim probably three or four complete times before falling out. Yeah, it kind of toilet bowled right in there and just kind of knocked its way out, but a second one from Olsen that he's had that wide, off, wide open shot a lot in this game, and the Eagles don't want to let him have that in that crunch time type moment where he might get in and make those types of plays. Schweitzer with another block. Great recovery there after biting on the pump fake. That's his third block in this one, Avery. And a couple of those have been in, have been some big blocks out there. He's had a couple of those reach over the top, rip out type plays as well. He gets called for a foul there. He wanted a jump ball call. He thought he had all hands on the ball. He gets called for the block. It'll be Olsen going to the free throw line now. He's currently two of three from the line today. First one from Olsen is good. Now up to nine points. Olsen's second free throw is good as well. And Linden is going to take a full timeout. Eight point lead on the scoreboard, 67-59, eight minutes to play. Don't go anywhere, you're watching the Huston, Sport, Huston Eagles Radio Network. If you want a place where you can be seen as an individual and know what you're doing and have a career to look forward to, this is your place. Eight minutes to go in an eight point ball game, 67-59. Linden Hornets currently lead this one. It'll be Huston basketball as Maranta has it. Being guarded full court by Phillips here. Finds Schuitza who's been putting in some great minutes off the bench in this one for Caruso. Coach Caruso. Phillips able to get his hand in on a pass. And Maranta with a great recovery slaps it off of Phillips' leg and goes out of bounds. Yeah, and Hus what a defensive play, Reese. Great recovery from Jeremy Maranta. Never gives up on a play. We've seen him this season with a few big blocks in transition. That time getting back, getting a hand in, knocking it away, knocking it off the leg of Phillips. Maranta with it. Here's Thomas now. Finds Balzer down low. Big size advantage here for Balzer. Pump fakes, but has it stripped away. Buckle coming the other way now. Gagne kicks Olsen. Drives in. No call, and McNeil lays it in. DJ Woods underneath the hoop. in some pain. I didn't quite see what happened. I saw him 
jump on the pump fake, and when he came down, he seemed to be in some pain. Yeah, he kind of ran across, tried to block that one, and I think he landed wrong on the follow down, but he played some good minutes out there for the Eagles. Here's Thomas, left side with it. Goes baseline, beautiful pass in the middle to Schuitza, who gets fouled on the way up, going back to the free throw line. Currently five of six from the line. All of his points have come from the free throw line in this one. First free throw from Schuitza is good. They are in the double bonus, so either way, it will be two free throws from here on out. Schuitza giving some good minutes in this second half. Very productive. Schuitza comes in, only eight minutes, puts up seven points, grabs two boards, dishes out two assists, and has four rejections. Yeah, he really kept this team in this game, Reese. That he got the crowd going, got the bench going, and he made some great plays out there to bring the Eagles close back into this ball game. Buckle with a great step back move on Balzer, not able to knock down the jumper. Kendall going to the basket in transition. Olsen gets called for the blocking foul. Justice Kendall will go to the free throw line, down eight with six minutes remaining. And this is how the Eagles want to score points right now in these free throw situations. Clock's not running. They can take their time on these shots. Kendall's been a key contributor for the Eagles over his whole career here. And these are the moments where he needs to step up and hit these big free throws. As you mentioned in the first half, the Eagles only shooting four attempts from the line throughout the entire first half. This will be free throw number 15 in just the first 14 minutes of play in the second half. As there goes my stat sheet paper over the front. Trapani for three, that's no good. Here comes Kendall the other way. And I'll take over the broadcast for just a minute here as Maranta tries to go up and under, doesn't get it. Colin is fouled underneath there. As the Eagles will go to the line to take another two free throws in this second half, which Reese, now that you've got your sheets back, we just mentioned the Eagles have been taking a lot of free throws in this half as it's gotten a lot more physical. As Derek Collin knocks that one down. This will be the 16th and 17th free throws of the half. Husson currently at 14 of 16 from the line so far. Second free throw from Collin is good. That makes them 15 for 17 here in the second half alone. 88%, 18 of 21 overall. Here's Buckle with it. Called for the travel. Hussin definitely starting to get a little bit of momentum now. 6-0 run in the last minute 15. Only a four point game. Here is Kendall driving baseline. He lays it in, 69-67, two point game. McCadden with it now. Olsen right side. They're going to call a foul on the floor. I believe that one will go on Lewis. It will. That will be on Scott Lewis. Only his first foul in this one. Olsen back at the line where he is 4 of 5 so far. Hasn't had the best night shooting. 9 points on 2 of 10 shooting. 1 of 5 from 3. He has found ways to contribute. Other than scoring though as he has 4 rebounds. Three assists and three steals. And what an effort play there from Jay Thomas to go dive down and get that one. 
Maranta loses his footing on the other end. Ends up being a turnover. And Olsen scores a fast break layup on the other end. Yeah, he makes up for that missed layup, or the missed free throw on that. Nice breakaway from him. That puts the lead back up to four. Kendall tries a floater, middle of the lane, can't get it to go. McCadden comes down with a rebound. And here is Buckle with a pull up three. No good there. Kendall finds Lewis right side. Now down low to Colin, who finds a cutting Maranta, who lays in a beautiful reverse layup. We have a two point game, Avery. The big Reese, that was a great layup by Maranta and some great all around team defense for them. Speaking of great team defense, there's another first force turnover as Buckle is called for the travel. Hudson will take over with four minutes, 20 seconds remaining in a one possession ball game. Chance to tie or take the lead here. Hudson only been in the lead for about three minutes and 15 seconds. Linden been in control about 91% of the game. Kendall likes to go for three. That one comes up short. Olsen comes away with his fifth rebound. Gagne with a nice, tough drive in the middle. <clears throat> Looks like Jay Thomas took a shot at the end of that play. Seems to be fine, though. Here's Maranta with it. Beautiful crossover to get in the lane. And they're gonna call Olsen for a foul underneath the hoop. A blocking foul. Maranta going back to the free throw line to shoot two more free throws. Maranta's first free throw is a bit long. It's off the back of the rim. He is now three of five from the line, up to 27 points. Eight rebounds, two steals for him as well. And it feels like that happened all of a sudden. I didn't even realize that he had been having that hot of a streak over the, this last second half, but that's what Maranta does, is he just kind of hangs around, and all of a sudden, he just makes everything. and. He's really helping the Eagles be in this ball game right now. Ties his career high, 28. He's hit that twice this season. Olsen with a take on Lewis and a late whistle will go against Scott Lewis for a push. And you can see on the faces and body language, Coach Caruso as well as most people in this Husson section do not agree with that late whistle. Olsen's first free throw is short. He is now four of seven from the line as his shooting struggles continue. Second free throw from Olsen as it gets much louder in here is no good. 73 to 70, here come the Eagles. Yeah, and that was that six-man Husson crowd that played a role in this one that I saw Jeremy Ronta try to hype up the crowd, and they got going for him, and it led to him missing those shots, and now the Eagles are still only down one basket. Jay Thomas cannot tie it up on a missed three there. Here's Harris, gets in the lane, can't put it in. Kendall comes down with his third board. Makes a beautiful move, but then gets rejected by Phillips. Great recovery there. And Justin Phillips to get back and get a hand on that shot. Kendall to inbound. Phillips will pick up a foul. 
trying to go for a steal on the inbounds. That'll be his fourth foul in this one. McNeil with four, Phillips has four, Buckle has three, so a little bit of foul trouble here late in the game for Linden. Yeah, and Maranta needs to make at least one, if not both of these in this. That first free throw is good. That'll give Jeremy Maranta a new career high, 29 points. Let's go along with eight rebounds and two steals. Phenomenal game for him so far, 12 of 17 shooting, five of seven from the line. Yeah, and that also makes it a two point game, which allows the Eagles with that one, one basket gives them the lead for the first time since the first five minutes of this game. Gagne has it stolen away by Lewis, who has it poked away by McNeil. And here's Olsen coming the other way. Puts up a shot, no good. Harris with the rebound. He's now being guarded by Maranta, right side. Gagne putting the moves on Caruso. And he gets called for a travel. Coach Caruso is going to take a full timeout, 73-72, to 72, as Hudson has found their way back into this one. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Hudson Eagles Radio Sports Network. Hudson makes it a priority of theirs to make sure each of their students are well-rounded and that we're prepared to go into the future. I mean, it's very rare to have a college that can emphasize the professor-student interaction, and Hudson hits it right on the head. Instead of just you know sitting in the classroom, it's a great way to get hands-on experience. I'm actually out here doing things and seeing how things work. After being here and meeting the people, I decided this is where I wanted to be, that there was no better option for me. Two minutes and 12 seconds to play here in this one in the second half of our doubleheader. Second game for these teams against each other in as many days. Huston currently trailing by one with the ball here. Two minutes remaining, 73 to 72. Here's Maranta working on the baseline, puts up a jumper, no good. Lewis with the tip out. A little bit too much. They're going to say it's Linden Ball. As Carlisle gets set to check back in. Harris with it now. Over to Buckle. To Carlisle, Olsen. And they're going to say Carlisle stepping on the sideline, I believe. That'll be another turnover for Linden. They're 21st of the game. Husson also with 19 turnovers. Kendall with it now. One point game. Pulls up. Foul line, no good. Maranta, offensive board, and puts it in. Make that 34, Reese, as Maranta makes another tough one on that one to bring the Eagles into that leading position for the first time since the first five minutes or so. And a great hustle from Maranta. Sees him diving on the floor, trying to get it up to Colin. And the call on the floor will be a jump ball. Looks like they're going to talk it over and Scott. Nope, they're going to call a jump ball. Possession arrow points to Linden. And it will be Hornets basketball. Down one with a minute to go. Yeah. 
Harris with it being guarded by Caruso up top. Carlisle. Buckle now with it. Ferranta against him. Buckle with a jumper is no good. Lewis comes away with it. Here comes Kendall the other way. 40 seconds remaining in a one point lead. And coach Warren Caruso will take a full timeout. Avery, let's keep it right here. What do you need to see out of this timeout with a one point lead, 38 seconds remaining to hold on to this one? The biggest thing is ball possession right now. The Eagles are gonna try to run this shot clock as far down as they can and then let one of their better shooters, I would think Kendall, take that shot to try to make it a three point game where they can't lose on a last second three. If they weren't to make that shot, you need to play good, strong, non-foul defense out there. You can't foul and lose on a free throw shot out on the floor. And the Eagles right now have been playing that great defense for several 20 minutes or so now that they've brought themselves back into this game. And now is the time you just need to be smart, not make the dumb plays, and make that clutch shot at the end of the game if you need to. Definitely cannot have a turnover out of this possession. As I mentioned earlier, Austin currently with 20 turnovers on the game. Linden right there with 23 of their own. Both of these teams have been struggling to take care of the ball. Tight game like this, that's gonna be a big key with 38 seconds remaining. Yeah, and it's gonna start with this inbound. Linden's not going to let Hudson get this ball in that easily and let them run this clock down. Kendall with it up top, 15 on the shot clock, being guarded by Harris. Phillips switches on to him. Beautiful bounce pass and a great cut from Derek Collin. Underneath, 76, 73, 20 seconds remaining. Linden's gonna take a timeout. We'll see if they can draw up a play. 76, 73, 23 seconds remaining. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Huston Eagles Sports Network. Linden has the basketball here with 23 seconds remaining. Down three on their own end of the court. We'll see out of the timeout what they have drawn up here. See if they can get an opening. Ball comes in to Harris in the backcourt. Working on Thomas. He finds Carlisle right side. Pass over to Olsen, tipped away by Lewis. Olsen gets it, three-pointer is up, no good. Harris can't put the tip in in. Collin comes away with the rebound, and he is fouled by Olsen with 2.5 remaining. Derek Collin will head to the free throw line, try to seal this one. Yeah, and if he makes just one of these, it's game over. If he misses both, the Hornets will have just one last desperation heave to try to tie this game up and send it to overtime, but Colin could ice this game right here, Reese. The first one is up, and he does just that. That is a four point lead, 77 to 73. What a comeback, Reese. That was. Quite a game there, one of the best games of the season for this Eagles team that they rallied, came back from being down big. 
they only had the lead for the last two minutes of the game or so, and they held right on to it, and now they're up five. Yeah, and five being their biggest lead of the game right now as we see a quick timeout from Hassan. But just some great defense. I think it started in that section where Shuita had that big block down there. It got the Hassan crowd going, got the whole defense going. At one point, Linden was up more than 15 in this game, and it allowed the Eagles were playing from behind for the whole thing. That big block kind of got everything rolling again, and then they just clawed and clawed and came back in this one, and they're going to go home with this win. Yeah, that big block from Schuitza, as you mentioned, a big factor in this one. Schuitza really came in and turned this whole game around almost single-handedly. Came in just eight minutes of play, scored seven points, two rebounds, two assists, and four blocks. Two or three of them being quite emphatic and getting this crowd really into it. Really shifted the momentum of this game and allowed Husson to claw back into it. And it's a great game for that momentum, like you said. Going into next week, they play Husson's rival in Maine Maritime, and that's going to be a big game for end-of-season conference rankings and all of that, that this is a great game for the Eagles to kind of get go into that one with a full head of steam. Yes, sir. 78 to 73. Our final here. Husson comes away with this one. And the game on a 9-0 run, 19-4 run. Overall, coming back from down 15, as you had mentioned. Leading the way for the Eagles, it was Jeremy Maranta with a new career high, 32 points on 13 of 19 shooting. Also pulled down nine rebounds and added two steals. That's there. with no three-pointers as well, Reese. That was all done on those tough layups inside and with his free throw shooting. Yes, Maranta had some incredible finishes down low through contact. He was able to get it done at, from everywhere. Derek Collin added 15, seven rebounds. Kendall added eight. Schuitza had seven in just eight minutes. Caruso with five. Ehlers and Balzer with four. Lewis added three of his own. And on the Linden side, it was Buckle leading the way with 23 points and five rebounds. Gagne added 13 as well. McNeil with 13. Olsen put in 11. Carlisle with eight. Phillips with two. Harris with two. And Terrell with one. Strong second half showing for the Eagles. Leads to a big comeback. Thank you all, everybody, for listening. For Reese Dannenberg, alongside Avery Henningsen, this has been a Huston University basketball at the Newman Gymnasium. Doubleheader. Big weekend. We had two games yesterday, two games today. Wrapping it up on Tuesday, as you mentioned, against the Huston Rivals main maritime. Thank you all, everybody, for tuning in to today's broadcast. Once again, 78-73, our final. Huston comes away victorious. Thank you all for watching. This is the Huston Eagles Sports Network.